Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. I know I've been gone for a while and sorry for that, but now I'm back. You know, I've just been concentrating at school, you know, I've just been busy. So I haven't been able to post, but now I'm back. I hope you guys are happy now. Let's enjoy this video. Guys, I know I'm a bit late on this, even though um, I'm a United fan, but I do know this has happened. It's been confirmed that Tenag was sacked and um, we brought in Ruben Amorim. So now, today, what I wanted to do is, is just go through his uh, manager profile and uh, see what type of manager he is. If he's, good to, if he's a good manager to take over Man United or if it's a risk which bad United are taking. So we're going to have an in-depth analysis and I hope you enjoy. Guys, now we're going to go through his stats against uh, clubs, uh, like his record against the clubs. So in total, he's, um, he's uh, faced Porto 18 times, like as a manager, he's faced Porto 18 times. He's won five, he's drawn five, and he's lost eight. Okay, maybe, yeah, that's, uh, that's, it's an okay stat, just he's lost maybe a bit too much. Um, I'm going to take three major teams, uh, for, in my opinion, Porto, Benfica, and Braga, as others are very small teams. So against Benfica, they played 13 times. Uh, they managed to win six times, draw three times, and lose four times. Um, Braga, um, they played 12 matches in total. Uh, Moyo has played 12 matches against them in total as a manager. Um, he's won eight times, lost two times. I mean, drawn two times, and uh, lost two times as well. So, according to these stats, um, he has um. He has lost quite a lot um, with the, in the derbies, let's say, or in the big games against Porto Benfica. Um, his preferred formation is a 3-4-3, um, which I think he will come with to Man United. Maybe adapt to that formation or just stick to maybe a 4 in the back, four, 4 at the back. But maybe for 3-4-3, maybe that might work out a lot for us. But uh, these are his stats uh, against other clubs. I've just taken out three big clubs in Portugal. Um, in the Premier League, as you know, there is a lot of big clubs, so you don't know. Um, it's very different to um, compare. But uh, um, that's uh, those are stats against clubs, and um, they're decent enough. Just maybe heavy defeats, not heavy. Yeah, basic heavy defeats to rivals such as Porto and Benfica. So let's go on to the next segment. As let's go through his achievements. So he's a two-time Portuguese champion, a three-time Portuguese. Uh, a league cup winner and a one-time portuguese super cup winner so that's in total that's six trophies and um, that's uh, some good experience in winning trophies i think man united do knew that we did have that with ten Hag, but then again it didn't work out um but uh with it with the fa cup and the club cup but then still uh throughout the, this season as well we weren't doing that good but with amorim he seems like he has some experience you know he has a lot of trophies so maybe he'll bring that spirit in and maybe he'll change the players mentality to be winning a lot of trophies and hopefully that's the case with uh, the release close we paid like 10 mil so that's a lot of money you know to bring in a 39 year old manager you know um from uh sporting well i have nothing against sporting we have we have had some good players from that this this time it's a manager and hopefully it goes well for ruben so let's move on to the next segment now let's get into his signings and let's see what type of signings he's made uh, so, first up, he's made the signing of uh, Manuel Ugarte, um, the player Manchester United currently have. Uh, he was there and he left for PSG. Um, he came in for around 24 million uh, euros, 24.5 to be exact. And then there's Victor Jokeres. Um, To be honest, this is one of the best signings Amarim could have made. And I hope he does come to Man United with his smashing it in the, in the Portuguese league. He came for 24 million exact like odd odd dot 24 billion and uh, that's a bargain but with uh, with him doing very well long he has a high release close um and then we can come to Trincao who came for he was on a loan fee for 3 million so I feel like that's also a good price for Trincao who was probably doing well there Ruben uh Pedro Porro that's one I've missed um he came for around 8.7 million from Manchester City. I can say Manchester City did lose is a good player over there. And now, if we get into his... Let me just get this up on the screen. All right. So now, um, I, I use transfer market, if you can see there. I use transfer market on all the stats and the achievements and everything. 
so if you guys want to also get some information um you can also uh head on to this website transfermarket.com so his transfer activity the total players he purchased was 71 um players with fee uh 32 um transfer expenditure was 253 million 691 uh euros um fee, fee per player was seven million nine hundred and twenty seven thousand eight hundred and forty four so that is a very good it's a good price it's a uh, i mean it's a good amount of money he spent and if we do it into a conversion with um into pound um, sterling Sorry guys, it's taking some time. Okay, so now I've done the conversion. You can check here if I've typed in the correct amount. It's around 213,404,869 uh, pounds. So that, that, is, that is a very good price. That is a very good amount of money. Um, he has spent that he has spent wisely with good quality players coming in. So I do hope if he comes into Man United, he will use that same, uh, uh same uh like same routine, same uh to bring in players. Maybe if he does try and bring in Yokerez, it will be a higher fee. But I don't think it will be that much. So yeah, uh, hope him. I hope that he does do a good job. So guys, a funny story. Um, in uh, when Jose Mourinho was coaching Man United, Ruben 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 Amorim had started an internship and was learning under him. Uh, so that's a very uh, funny story there. Um, but uh, I was just want to discuss what he can bring to Man United, obviously. And you know what I think he can bring? Experience. Even though he's only thirty nine, he does have a lot of experience. If he did start early. He can bring the spirit and the willingness to play and win trophies. That's what Man United need now. As Ten Hag, I think he had lost the dressing room and everything was going haywire. But there was a story on Ten Hag where they were pinpointing his problems and some of them were conflict with players, uh, his training methods and how he wanted to. He was craving the control, like he wanted to control, even though a manager doesn't want control. But apparently, that's one of his main problems there, and also. Yeah, that's it. And um, I feel like Ruben Amram is completely opposite. He's probably got to hold the dressing room together. He's got to rejuvenate some players and hopefully play some good football. So we can come back stronger. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, an overview of Ruben Amram and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching so much. I hope you really enjoyed it. I know it's been a while since I posted. I am a bit sick, but uh, I still made a video today. Um, I hope you really enjoyed it and uh, see you next time. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.